Why is it so difficult to change someone even when the change is for their own good? Why do we fail at influencing someone to study or to exercise or to get focused or to take up more responsibility? In this booster shot, I'm going to share that one key ingredient without which it is impossible to create a genuine change. We often respond like small children when someone suggests something new to us. Our first reaction is often to object, even if it's something that we might like or may eventually like. Researchers in Germany, the Netherlands and Luxembourg once tried a different method to get people to quit smoking. And this tells so much about the way the human mind functions and how we can use this insight to understand the essence of influencing a change. Smokers were exposed to messages that were anti-smoking. These messages elaborated the health risk of smoking. But they made a very simple change in the way these messages were shared with them. In one case, someone read the script to them. And in the other case, smokers read the script out loud themselves. People in the latter group found the ideas to be more persuasive. What it speaks to, I think, is one of the most important ideas around creating change in the world. It's the notion that we are most effectively and profoundly influenced, not just by ideas or evidences or data that is given or forced upon us, but instead by ideas and evidences that we generate on our own. It's a remarkable study, as in this case, the messages came from someone else. These messages were not self-generated but merely the act of reading these messages out loud instead of listening to the same message changed the ownership of the idea. This takes me to the fundamental need of our minds and that is autonomy. We humans need to feel in control of our decisions, behaviors and goals. If an idea is not self-endorsed or self-approved, then no amount of convincing or force can make a genuine long-term change. Only when the logic and rationale of anything new is integrated with all that we previously know and is internalized in our mind, we get motivated and convinced to follow the new course of action. In a way, ideas are also like kids. We like our own more than any other. The intuitive role of an innovator or a change maker is to have an idea and then push for it. But they will succeed in influencing people and implementing the change only when they understand that this is a process of co-design and co-ownership. And it is this that will lead people to commit themselves to these ideas. One fundamental way of implementing this is to begin at positions of alignment. What I mean by this is that very often we start at the point of conflict. You and I may agree that we need to change practices, but what we may disagree upon is how this particular problem needs to be solved. And we start our conversation there. That's starting at the place of misalignment. Change and influence begin at the place of agreement and not conflict. If you're trying to bring about a change, then people that you're trying to change should understand rationally and feel that they are the authors of that change. To bring about a change, you should aim not for a buy-in, but instead for ownership. I hope that was helpful. I'll see you in the next Booster Show.